Thanks, Satish. Yes, it's customer analytics use case that I am using as part of the demo. Today, online shoppers can zero in the best deal with minimal time and effort because of search capabilities and online reviews. Then how does a vendor remains competitive given such a savvy customer? The answer to the question is customer behavior analytics. Now, massive amount of data about customer behavior is available in disparate sources such as clickstream web logs, social media, and enterprise data warehouse. The vendor that captures, combines, and analyzes this data can better develop a better understanding of prospective customer. Based on this analytics, the vendor can develop targeted advertisement, promotions, rewards to attract the customer to their website. Now, customer analytics let you answer the following question too. How long does a new customer take to make their first purchase? What are the browsing patterns for the purchases? How can you combine data between online sales, which is stored in Hadoop Lake, to your in-store sales data, which is stored in Enterprise Data Warehouse, as an example? Here, we are using Vertica SQL, SQL on Hadoop capabilities to understand customer behavior because it can analyze massive amount of data, both structured and unstructured together. Vertica is an enterprise-ready advanced platform that allows you to access not only Hadoop, but your data stored in AWS S3. Now, the demo environment consists of two nodes. One is server node, which has Vertica database version 9.0, Cloudera Hadoop 5.11.2 on a CentOS. Now, in this example, we are showing Cloudera, but you can use any Hadoop distribution. And in this example, we are installing Vertica on the same database and uh, on the same platform as Hadoop. Um, but you can also access when they are not on the same platform. And the client node has management console, Vertica client, Apache, and application to show the dashboards. Now, this customer analytics use case, which I'm showing, has data sources from various locations. One, in-store sales, which are in a ROS format, which is stored in Vertica. ROS full form is read optimized storage. Online sales data, there are two sets of online sales data, which are in the same parquet format, but one will be stored in Hadoop Lake, the other will be stored in AWS S3. And the third set of data we have is clickstream logs, which is in JSON format, stored in Hadoop Data Lake. Now, here is the architecture, which is being followed in the use case. In the central, there is a Vertica engine, which is accessing data from its native format, which I said ROS, which is read optimized storage. Here, we are talking about store sales we kept in data warehouse. And there is Hadoop Lake, where we have Parquet. Now in this example, we are showing Parquet, but you can use ARC or any other format. And clickstream logs, which are the customer clicks and session information. And the online sales also is stored. The same piece of online source is stored in AWS S3, which is the CPA storage, which you already know probably. Now, let's jump into the demo. So, let me log into the server node. As I said in my previous slide, that we have two nodes. One is the server and the client node. And show you the component which are installed on the server node. Okay, now I logged into the server node. So the first thing I'll do is try to see if Hadoop is installed by executing this command. This allows me to tell the HDFS has been installed on this machine and it's running. The second thing is I also want to show you how Vertica is also installed here, Vertica. 
so you can see the processor now you can also log into vertica using vertica command line interface which is called vsql and i want to show you that there are nodes how many nodes so it's a one node cluster and when i do slash d there are no objects yet created so we will be creating the first step is to create tables and load data as part of the enterprise data warehouse into vertica okay so i will go into the ddl script now now the tables that i'm going to create are stored in vertica in their native vertica ros format so let me log in there oh sorry okay and then i'm going to load the schema first now here you can see the store schema has been loaded along with some dimensions which are required for the store schema and i'm going to load the data for it now you can see the data is loaded we are loading almost about 5 million transactions here for the demo purposes and some 3 million for other tables so now let me do a select star from store dot store sales limit 10. now this data is coming from ROS format of vertica native format as i said ROS is read optimized storage okay now before i create these external tables which are also part of this let me first load data into hadoop and s3 and then create these external tables so for that i need to go into another folder where i have created hadoop scripts now let me show you one of the scripts what it does now this script is first does is first creates a folder in hdfs and a user hdfs and then copies the data from the local file system which is unix system into hadoop so my data is stored in the local unix system here and it copies there and then it lists so there are three files which i'm going to execute the first one is clickstream log file now clickstream log data is basically all about clicks all the clicks which have been done by the customer i'm loading that data first into hadoop now you can see that the data is loaded and by executing this command again you should be able to see the same list of files which are copied there so that was the first one second i'm going to also do the session information of the clicks again it will create a folder in hadoop a separate folder for the session information and load and copy the data and it is copied into this folder in hdfs and the last one um, i'm going to load data into hadoop is the parquet format one now this it does again same thing it creates a folder in high warehouse because it's a parquet format it can be a hive day high formatted one too so that's why i'm just showing you an example there now it can be a org format too so you can have whatever format of file you can access using vertical so that is also copied into that and when i check it out when i list the table again i want to show you the tables are copied by executing the command okay so here you go so it lists the table 
now there is one more component of the online sales which are also copied in s3 and i want to show you that and this is where okay yes yeah, just refreshing the thing so this is where the s3 data for the online sales the same similar data of online sales is stored in here now you have loaded the data into hadoop and aws s3 now let's go and create the external tables so okay so we are going to create four tables right two of them are for the click team information two are online sales one is stored in hadoop one is stored in s3 let me show you one of the scripts and how easy is to create an external table pointing to a wherever location is it so in this case i'm creating an external table which is pointing to hdfs file system which is a json format file into click steam data set so now i go ahead and, and log into vertica again using vertica vsql which is command line interface and create each of the external tables so let me do first is the click all the click information so i create if you go and look in ddls you should be able to see the first table created which is about that now if i do select star from hdfs schema limit 10 now i should see the data and there you go you can see the data set now let's me do the other files So the second external table I'm going to load is about the session information. Now this has also been created. So if you see, the visit log is about session information. Select star from HDFS schema dot click steam limit 10. Again, sorry I made a mistake in there and I'm going to run that so so it shows me the 10 records next now I have to do the two more file tables I need to create now the third one I'm going to create is the external table for per K parquet hive external table from hdfi so this is going to create a table external table but it is pointing to the parquet data which is stored in hadoop limit 10 so there you go and the last one i want to do is the one which is stored in parquet data one which is stored in hadoop so let me first show you uh, how easy it is to again mention it's the same thing you kind of just mention where the data is coming from or pointing it pointing the data so this is s3 this is where the s3 data is so i'm going to lower create the table it created and when i do select star from s3 limit 10 You can see the data okay so we have created and loaded the data created the tables for showing the enterprise data warehouse schemas the hadoop data as well as s3 now let's analyze this data using the dashboard these dashboard are created using some d3 libraries and php programming now here you see again the architecture of how the demo is being shown we have a vertical engine which is processing data or combining data or analyzing data from various sources one is its own ros format the second is hadoop from hadoop lake either it is parquet or json files or in AWS, in this case, it's Parquet. 
So the first graph, let's check the first graph. It shows the comparison of online versus in-store. Now this data, as I said, in-store was coming from ROS, online is coming from Hadoop here in a parquet format. And also, I'm also comparing that data set with the clickstream log data which I have, where I'm seeing how many converted and bounced. Now the second graph, which I'm showing again, is exactly same as the first one, except the online sales data is coming from AWS S3. As you had seen in my graph, that you're able to see that. So when I click any of the months, now it will process and show me day-by-day -day distribution of the online sales with store sales. And the same way I can compare and see how the online sales, when sales were happening, what was happening on the website, what kind of people were, are they converting, are they abundant, or the bounce visitors. The next graph I would like to show is the online referrals. And you can see here that most of the people who came to the site are either direct or from Google or Facebook, and then it tapers off. And what kind of words they are kind of looking for when they come into our website. Then the next one is about hot products and promos. Now in this, there are three charts. The first left chart shows the top hot products. Now that is determined by how many people have placed the item into their cart and also converted. So that's how it has been determined here. The second chart is about what kind of promotions really worked and how do we categorize them is by based on how many people who have came through the campaign clicks and converted. So that's how I know. And this is just another chart to show you the what kind of I've products have been sold, best sold. Now I would like to show you another chart which allows you to see how the the how the distribution of visitors were. Now here in this the color codes are shown as two types of color codes. One is session type and page view type. The first inner circle is where what happened to the customer when they came to the first to our website you can see that 60 percent of them are bounced visitors but the other ones are one who converted and the other ones are who have converted through the campaign and you can click through one of that and see how more distributions of how the customer went to which page and that information you can see which page and eventually they got converted or they got information or they did what now similar chart i can show you in a different format here the you can see how what kind of pattern does the customer follow and how do they get converted so if you see people who came to the home page, 50% just left. These we term as bounce visitors. And then some of the people who came from the home page got then can then came through and then got converted. Either did an informational or they got converted through some mechanism. So here you can clearly see what kind of pattern does a customer follow to complete a purchase. So, this is how we can analyze data from various data sources. I think that's all I had to show. Thanks.